And it's when him and Loki are looking out and he's like, is this the greatest power in the universe? And he's like, I don't know, man, I, I guess it is. I loved learning that you were a Loki fan before you got the job. You took that role very seriously. I think Marvel was very lucky to get you because this show nails this character. You have this sort of now legendary visual pitch packet that I read about, and uh, it was apparently pretty robust. I'm dying to know what kinds of stuff was in that pitch packet that helped you get the job. So the very first card on the pitch packet, it was like a PowerPoint presentation. It said, sorry, because I say sorry all the damn time. It's because I'm British, right? We just say it. We don't mean it. We just say it. And like, and I found with American people, sometimes I say it and they're like, oh no, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I'm not sorry. It's fine. It's just, I just throw it out. So I, I put that in the pitch because I was, I'm just going to get that out of the way. Um, but it honestly, I spoke about like, I think I had different slides for the, just, you know, things in the comics that has resonated with me, with Loki, just the character across the MCU, what I love about the character, what I was so excited, because I had the pilot script, so what I was so excited about in the pilot script. And then obviously we're setting up a new corner of the MCU with the TVA. So I, you know, I had like, visual references for like design and style like i really was excited by the idea because in the comics obviously there's you know the infinite office space with those desks that stretch off into infinity so that yeah. definitely played into a lot of the style that we did for it but i was excited by the idea of like taking that brutalist architecture and there's a lot of that where i grew up so i grew up in southeast london so clockwork orange was filmed near where i grew up and children oh. met but marrying that up with this kind of Midwest kind of architecture because you know the TVA are heroic and I thought it was really fun marrying that up with the Brutalist because you have, you know, the timekeepers are very godly and overseeing yeah. things. So it felt like a good marriage to me. And then beyond that, just making it this big love letter to sci-fi. So, I mean, I stole, this packet has so much stuff in it, but I stole from like every sci-fi film. I'm sure sci-fi nerds will see it and be like, oh, that's from that and that's from that. Like, um. Our time doors were inspired by Dune and like, I'm, I'm so Dune, and I'm trying to think of like other stuff. Uh, the font I, of the computer I, I, was alien. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was gonna say, I definitely felt a lot of Hitchhiker's Guide in terms of the yeah. vibe in that feeling. So yeah. I so appreciated that. I so appreciated that. <laughs> Kate, can you please tell me, please, that somebody on set was recording the Loki lectures that Tom Hiddleston was giving <laughs> as he was delivering them to the cast and crew? Please tell me that we I could see know. some. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know. I'm so sorry. Well, I know the one with Owen was not recorded. So basically, yes. we did one to the cast and crew. Um, actually, not cast and crew. The, just the crew. I don't crew. know if any of the. I think some of the cast might have been in there, but not everyone. But basically, yeah, we did that because I, I just thought my heads of department, like we all had like kind of a clear idea of where we wanted to take it, but. It was just fun, right, to, I think, pay respect to this amazing character that's very beloved, but also hear about Tom's experiences, you know, across the last 10 years. But no, the one with Owen, I have quite a clear memory of that. I remember literally, like, we had this conference room, and I remember being like, you guys have fun, and, like, closing the door and just <laughs> leaving them in there, and, like, Owen uh, loved it. But, you know, I mean, it's just Tom is such an encyclopedia of Loki knowledge. He's really enthusiastic about the character. And I think also beyond that, it was just it's amazing because he's just so academic and so passionate about telling the right story for Loki. And I think that it was very unique for me as a director to work with an actor who not only was so generous in trusting me to work with him after, you know, carving out this character for 10 years, but also being will willing to like take the leap to be like, okay, well, we have to take this character to somewhere new because he is somewhere new, he's in the TVA. And, and, but kind of willing to, you know, go into the fire with me. So yes, I'm very, very pleased about that. I, I am a big comedy nerd. I'm based here in LA. I'm a huge fan of the improv comedy scene here. I was so happy to see some of my favorite comedy people like Eugene Cordero popping up in the show. What yes. is your approach to doing comedy in a sci-fi story like Loki? Well, I think for me, cause I've done improv in England and like my writing partner's an improviser and like, so it's definitely something I definitely love and like my background's in comedy. I think for me, like good comedy, right? It's always grounded in truth. Like most people in a comedy film, the performance, like they're not playing it for laughs. They're playing it usually like it's the worst day of their lives, usually. And I think that's the fun thing with Eugene, right? In Loki is that everyone's been at that thing where they're like, I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna get fired. And like, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm in over my head. And I think he, I mean, he's a genius as I'm, as you know. And I, I was so happy that we caught him for Casey because I think we've all been that kind of, yeah, very nervous office assistant or like, oh God, I don't want to get in trouble with my boss. And I think he really captured that in a very beautiful way. But actually, 
My favorite moment with him is actually not a comedy moment. And it's when him and Loki are looking out and he's like, is this the greatest power in the universe? And he's like, I don't know, man, I, I guess it is. And like, but it's so pure of heart and so sweet. And yeah, it was very fun. It is just so brilliant to take this story, this Loki story, the TVA, the, the, in, the most infinite power of the universe, and to bring it down to that kind of <laughs> mundane comedic, you know, I was seeing like, I was feeling British humor. I was, with, then you get Owen Wilson and his amazing like Texan wit. Like it was just yeah. a beautiful combination of everything. I want to talk about the set design. Uh, Kasra Farahani's set design is unreal. Yeah. Some of the most beautiful things I've ever seen with my eyeballs. What kinds of things did you two sort of sync up with as you were developing the the, the sets for the show? The weird thing was, I think, because like I when I pitched, I basically had all these pictures of like brutalist architecture and Midwest and lots of things from across sci-fi. And I had stuff that I remember like retro futuristic technology because like basically I used to be a temp in a lot of offices and I remember just working on computers that shouldn't be anymore. And I was like, why is this not being updated? Or And they were like, well, it works, so it's fine. And I just... Something tickled me about the idea of the people at the top of the tree in the universe using technology that was slightly outdated. You know, and I love Brazil and like, I thought, oh, it's really fun actually. And I think Kazra, like, he has an incredible sense of humor and we definitely like hit it off in that regard just because the cat, for example, in that cube that Loki drops into, that's Kazra's pitch. He was like, oh man, this guy should have a cat in the cube with him and just like, so he's living there. Cause I think beyond just being an amazing designer. He's a really amazing storyteller. And I remember when he came into pitch and Kaz was probably in a similar position to me, like he was an artist on Thor and he had done production design, but he hadn't done something of this scale before. So, you know, he came to play like me. And I remember seeing his pitch and we had pictures of like weird old computers that were the same in our pictures. And I was like, this guy is inside my brain and then some because he's a genius. And I was like, I just have to work with him. And I, it's just that beautiful thing, I think, you know, for me, filmmaking is about community and like you want to find your people to work with. And I think with Kazra from the off, I just instantly got on with him and we have a similar sense of humor. And we just kind of that thing, like I think the battle really was just like, how do we bring this to life? Because we already wanted to tell the same story. I have time for one more question. We are Nerdist. I got to ask a nerdy question. What kinds of tabletop games do you play? Do you have a favorite? And how has tabletop gaming affected your work creatively? I'm very meticulous. I'm very strategic. Uh, I'm very mischievous. Some people don't like playing games with me because I'm very <laughs> sneaky. Uh, <laughs> um, but my favorite game, oh, this is so hard. I love Everdell. I think it's so beautiful. I really like Betrayal. That's one that I've played a lot with friends of mine. I love mm -hmm. horror. Great story uh, there. Great story, yeah. I'm trying to think. Exploding Kittens is one I've played a lot over the pandemic. That's the one that people won't play with me because I'm very evil at it. <laughs> like, okay, we've got Betrayal, Exploding Kittens. This is informing a lot of, okay, this makes <laughs> sense for Loki. This makes sense that they got this person to do the Loki series. Kate, thank you so much for talking to me. I love the show. Congrats on all the success. I can't wait to see the rest of it and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you. Cheers. It was great talking with you. Thanks. Thanks.